Hi, everyone. I'm Kathleen Q, and um, I'm married to Chuan Noriega. Uh, and I just want to say a few things before bringing Chuan up here, a few things for Chuan on his 50th birthday. There are many, many things I admire and love about Chuan, but one of the most is his ability to get things going, to have the most outrageous, magnanimous, expansive vision of what can be done and then to do them. I think as other people have mentioned, Chuan loves to work. He, is, he loves to work, he is very happy when he's working, he's passionate about, uh, about his jobs and his projects. And so I remember when several years ago he had met with the Getty uh, in the early planning stages of Pacific Standard Time, and they asked him if he'd like to do a show for Pacific Standard Time. And he came home that day and he said, I'm so excited because he had proposed instead of doing one show, he'd like to do three different types of shows at three different museums in three different parts of the city. Why do just one or two? Um, and then the number quickly climbed to four and then ended up at five, right? Uh, fifth was added in the home stretch. Needless to say, that led to some periods of incredibly frenetic activity at our house, um, mostly concentrated over the last eight months. Luckily, Chun also has a wonderful skill of collaborating and putting together great teams. You've seen some of his team partners here at the podium. Um, I'd also like to point out Pilar Tonkins Rivas, who was one of his co-curators, along with Tere Romo. They did the five shows together, and so, and they did a sensational job. And they completed all four shows, and then the fifth show, and the catalog, just in time for Chong's birthday, for his 50th birthday. Um, so art is ephemeral. Um, these shows make a great contribution to Pacific Standard Time, but after January and February, they will come down. There is a magnificent catalog that I think some of you have. It's, it's really quite an accomplishment to, to put together a catalog for four different shows, and I think they did a sensational job. Um, and this catalog provides context and history to the significant post-war contributions of Mexican-American and Chicano-Chicana artists to the culture of Los Angeles. But Chuan can't really carry those around with him. Um, for, for one of his birthday gifts, right, because the, the, the um, catalog weighs, I think, about three pounds. Um, so he can't carry them around with him. And so for one of his birthday gifts, I wanted something that he could have with him most of the time that would commemorate the incredible accomplishment of these shows and also give him access to some of the images that he so passionately loves because he loves this work um, on an ongoing basis. So I had something, Sean, if you come up, I had something made specially for your 50th birthday. This is a briefcase, oh. and it has a computer case, <laughs> and there's a, you know, there's art inside as well, oh my and there's pencil holders and, and cell phone holders, and, yes, and yeah, you can wear it right now. Really? Yeah, so happy birthday. Hey, I should point out that it's also uh, 15 years since Kathleen and I first started dating. And, and I really do mean dating. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, this is really meant as our open house for the center. We do this every fall. And since we have these wonderful exhibitions uh, around the city, but here on the campus at the Fowler Museum, we thought we'd uh, do this as a chance for you to come see the exhibitions, meet the artists. I'll, I'll point out uh, a number of the artists that are here as well. Um, I, I want to just correct one thing that Harry said. Um, I did call him up and I didn't say, hey, I hear you've been looking for me. But his response was, uh, no, actually, I'm making pasta. <laughs> 
<laughs> cooking pasta for, for Marvin himself. Uh, I was trying to, I flew in uh, my niece and nephew uh, to spend a weekend with us. Uh, my sister passed away about seven years ago, and, and uh, it was really important to have them here, especially since my niece is a dead ringer for my sister. And uh, my mother was able to come out as well, and she brought a photograph of us that looked like I was, I was about six years old and I was standing next to my niece. <laughs> and it's just interesting to see those continuities and how um, how life and family can kind of reproduce itself uh, in many different ways. And I was thinking that uh, I had a really hard time when I turned 40. It took me about a year to get over it. And when I finally came to terms with it and accepted that in fact I was 40, I had just turned 41. And I realized you can't really hang on these things very long because uh, the, the moment will pass. And I realized that 50 meant something very different for me. And it meant that I was putting aside for the first time my childhood, my youth, and that I was taking my first tentative steps into adulthood. <laughs> and so I was just so pleased to have you all here to share that with me. Uh, some of the older folks like Harry Gamboa to give me some advice uh, what it means to be an adult how to move within the world as a, an adult. And I have help from another person who gave me my favorite card here. It's called Serious Charm. <laughs> and it's from a, a good friend here named Dia, who we're about the same age in many ways. Uh, and so we'll help each other as we move into adulthood. Uh, I do want to say a few things about the L.A. Chicano uh, project. It has been a, a kind of a consuming effort over eight years, and it really began as a research project to find out what's out there. Uh, we know the museums keep missing the, the history of Chicano art, uh, but what's there to help tell that story in addition to the work? And we spent about eight years doing that archival research. Karen Mary Davalos here uh, was very pivotal. She's our house scholar that most of the oral histories, not all of them, but most of them, uh, Tere Romo, uh, myself, a number of students, uh, Mira Solviojas, Colin Gonco, and when this became an exhibition project as a capstone, uh, Pilar Tompkins, uh, Rivas, came on board, and she, Tere, Tere and I kind of figured out how do we divide and conquer the, the kind of getting into the throes, the deep part of the exhibitions, kind of, uh, Reminded me of that joke, you know, where you kind of wake up and say, I, I agreed to do what? Um, but I think what really made it uh, possible is, one, we had a phenomenal team who worked very well together. We had incredible support from the museums that understood right away what we were doing. And I'd say the first one, so Marla Burns here, the director of the Fowler Museum. worked together about 11 years ago on just another poster, a, a traveling show of um, poster art, uh, Chicano poster art, a uh, long time ago. Um, and it was great to have uh, her, uh, the LACMA, and the Entree National Center come on board and, in a way that was very deep and profound. It, it really signaled a commitment to move beyond a framework of where do we get that one museum exhibition to how do we have a systemic impact? How do we really shake up uh, the larger framework? And first of all, by showing that these museums, uh, in, in many ways, will, will, will have more to show by collaborating. And first, the first thing that comes out of that is to convey the sense that there's more than one thing to say about Chicano art in any given moment, or decade, or two, or three, that takes place between shows. 